And one more point regarding the uncomfortable or tricky questions. I think it holds as as good for the interview as for phase two subjective part because in subjective parts, not all questions we will be able to know the answer for sure. But the point is, uh, we need to come up with an answer, a decent answer, which you can, which can fetch at least a decent amount of marks. Say if not six or seven out of ten, at least two or three. So I mean, I think that phase also one needs to practice very tough for tricky questions and see how they fare. Hi everyone, my name is Anu Chindal. Welcome to my channel. Today I have Avinash with me, who has cleared RPA Grade B 2021 examination very recently. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Avinash, on clearing the examination. And uh, before st starting with the actual questions and answers, I would uh, request Avinash to, uh, you know, introduce himself, ask a series, uh, you know, talk about his education, his work experience, if any, his attempts in RBA, how he prepared. We will talk about those things, but a basic introduction about you, and then we will move forward. Sure. I am Avinash. I hail from Pondicherry. I have a postgraduate degree in development studies from the Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. Uh, hence, uh, domains like economics, society, politics have been some of my interests. And I like to solve crosswords, follow cricket, uh, in my spare time uh, and uh, post college i decided i would get into the general competitive exams preparation and post this was my first attempt at the rbi and uh, exam and fortunately i was able to get through this time very nice amazing i think there's going to be a lot of inspiration and a lot of small tips that students will gather from this interview okay moving towards the questions directly uh, when we talk about phase one what all methods and strategies did you approach did you uh, use in order to prepare for general awareness as well as quant reasoning english right so uh, what i felt after looking at the paper was the phase one exam is quite similar to your uh, uh, po bank exam say ibps or sbi in terms of say the kinds of questions asked in the difficulty level also so i mean my preparation uh, hinged on that actually so uh, general awareness from uh, websites uh, which cover banking current affairs and generally also uh, since I've been preparing for competitive exams in general I had a hold of the static portion and um, a good number of subjects so the banking current affairs helped me in getting the remaining part and as for quant reasoning and English I believe that uh, the key is practice that's it the more questions you do you keep doing because I mean, the concepts are quite uh, easy to understand, but the nuances and the tricks and the pressure situation that the exam puts you in demands a lot of practice. More the practice you do, errors you make, and you uh, learn the nuances and tricks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Avinash, I would want to ask you one question, which I believe I have not asked a lot of uh, successful aspirants till now, and that is analysis of the mocks. Okay. Uh, now, we spend a lot of time, a lot of students spend a lot of time on taking the mocks, huh. but too little time on analyzing the mocks, huh. analyzing your mistakes. Right. So what was your approach towards analyzing these mocks and understanding where are you going wrong and then improving upon them? Yeah, well, uh, I've seen people, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, people do mocks, but sometimes people miss out on the analysis part, as you said. So, I mean, the main point of a mock test is that one, you put yourself in an exam situation and see how you think, how you approach questions and whether your approach was right. For that, I mean, after the exam sitting and uh, spending uh, an hour or two uh, going through each individual solution, seeing how you attempted and where you went wrong, is a, it's a very important part of it. And what I believe is that you should not only go through questions which you got wrong, but also the ones you got right. Because... Mm -hmm. Uh, only a small good chunk of questions you know, know for sure other questions you do some sort of guesswork or something so there may be some wrong logic used but you arrive at the correct answer so for checking all that and even in all the correct and wrong questions the solutions have additional information in terms of concepts or tricks or etc so all that additional information also help you a lot in the actual exam even though the question itself might not repeat a lot of stuff from the explanations and the elaborations will repeat in the exam I Amazing, amazing. I think Avinash, you've brought out a very interesting and a very pertinent, important point that, uh, you know, a question is not exactly a question. It is just like a topic which has which has a lot of information, a lot of knowledge 
uh, you know already engrossed in the, inside it so the more you squeeze out of it the more you get out of it i think i think uh, students need to realize it the aspirant serious aspirants need to realize this that uh, every question needs that analysis and i think the point that you brought about uh, about uh, honestly and understanding whether the right answer was based upon a wrong logic or a silly logic or was it based upon you know uh, you know complete understanding of the topic itself you have to have that kind of honesty with yourself very nice very nice i think if the students are able to use this i am very very certain nobody nobody can stop them from cracking phase 1 okay let's move to phase 2 now uh, if we if we start with uh, see economic and social issues i know would be an easy portion for you because of your background uh, in development studies uh, so let's let's instead talk about finance and management how do you how did you uh, you know uh, prepare for it how did you go about uh, you know understanding how to write questions and answers of finance and management especially descriptive part and because management is something where you have to read a lot of theories understand a lot of concepts behind those theories how did you go about that as well i would say that the strategy which <laughs> helped me in phase 1 uh, helped me to a good amount in phase 2 as well i mean phase 2 also has a half of objective component i mean going through the questions and solutions does help you in that objective part while also the concepts because uh, if if there's a mock test series the uh the ones who set it would have aimed to cover all the pertinent topics right since you go through it solutions it's a comprehensive revision of all the areas so that helped me in i mean uh i used to do mocks and uh, reading the notes uh side by side so that i mean it used to be both used to reinforce each other in that way and mm. as for the uh writing part the, i i would say there are two two aspects to it one is the knowledge and the concepts that is one thing and second is how you put them through how you arrange them coherently according to the demand of the question and i mean this kind of revision and attempting questions help me pick up the knowledge and concepts part while for the coherency and the narratives that uh, i i it took some practice some practice and feedback from peers and so on to get that part right i think very nice very nice let's jump into the interview now uh, i'm sure they must have asked you a lot of questions on development studies development issues because of this amazing background that you've had so <clears throat> if you can recon recall can you talk about some of the questions that were probably asked and the direction that the interview took so that other aspirants also have an idea right what i realized after attending the interview is that it is not really a test of your knowledge because i mean your knowledge has been tested enough in both the phases so the point is to see how you approach a question how well your communication skills are and how you like deal with the tricky situation and uh, arguments so i mean there were some tricky questions on current very hot situations the questions were provocative some of them and there were some other questions on basic economy and what say one question about what is political economy and second question is this globalization retreating and so on so i mean these questions uh I, I was able to answer the, the generally the preparation I got for phase one and phase two. So I mean, what I feel is that the knowledge part uh, is sufficiently covered in both the uh, phases. The preparation, what you need, one needs to refine is the answering skills, the communication skills, as well as quick thinking on the spot. I think that comes through good number of mock interviews. I remember taking some mocks with you uh, before the interview, so. i think so i mean the knowledge part i mean the aspirants you don't worry too much if they have cleared the phases what well, was more important is i mean think with a calm head and uh, like uh, think on the spot yes yes uh, that's very true uh, one more thing that uh, you know i i, I don't know if uh, you know it is easy to answer this question or not for me i don't know the answer to this question i don't don't know how to develop this skill some students face this problem of not being able to uh come out with the right answer on the spot they are aware about it they have read about it they know about it but uh, their mind just is not able to process things in that kind of environment at such a speed so how would you if you had a problem like that how would you have developed that i wish i had a an answer to this question <laughs> but honestly i don't have it. the point is that all of these exams especially at the interview stage i do demand a lot of luck and uh, comfort i mean the comfort level with the panel and the 
Pamilat, you have with that particular question at hand. You may be aware of 100 questions, but the 101st question, which you're not aware of if you are asked, then that may lead to a problem. So I guess there's a lot of subjectivity and uh, uh, to put it bluntly, luck involved in that. So I really don't know one thing uh, which we can uh, which can help us more practice, practice, practice with uncomfortable, tricky questions in all yes. phases. Hmm. Hmm. I think that is where the answer lies. Uh, we are coming back to the same. And the problem is that we don't know uh, normally we don't know how to, uh, you know, prepare ourselves for the interview other than taking mocks. Uh, but I think because of technology, the fact that we can record ourselves. Recently, recently I experimented with some students and uh, I asked them to keep recording themselves every day. Ask themselves, let's say, 10 questions out of the blue, uh, which they might not be aware of the answers of, and record themselves. And, and then to see their own recording and figure out what are the problems, how are their facial expressions changing, how is their voice changing. And I think that helped those people in cracking the examination as well. So I think that is one way of practicing that can help, uh, just like a mock interview, but with yourself. Yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense, actually. Yes, okay. Uh, yes, you are about to say something. Yeah, I mean, and one more point regarding the uncomfortable or tricky questions. I think it holds as well, as good for the interview as for phase two, subjective part. Because in subjective parts, not all questions, we will be able to know the answers for sure. But the point is, uh, we need to come up with an answer, a decent answer, which, you can, which can fetch at least a decent amount of marks. Say, if not six or seven out of ten, at least two or three. So, I mean, I think that phase also, one needs to practice very tough for tricky questions and see how they fare. Hmm. Hmm. I think you are very, very right on that. Uh, not always will you know all the questions answers. Of course, you need to you need to manage out there and make sure that you are able to at least get average marks, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so before we finish with the interview, uh, if you have anything that you want to say, uh, any message that you want to send across to all the aspirants, uh, you can do that. Uh, it'll be very helpful for all the aspirants. Sure. <clears throat> so the I mean all these competitive exams. As the name says, are very competitive. You have a lot of people attempting for a very few posts. I mean, that uh, tends to intimidate a lot of people. But what I realized is that it isn't a day's thing. So the point is, uh, if you break it down into parts, like say the preliminary exam, you just need to cross the cutoff. You don't need to like score uh, 6, 70 or 80 percent. If you do that, if you just cross the cutoff itself, you are among the top few percent of the candidates. So, I mean, like if you break it down into smaller steps, preliminary, and then means you subdivide it into like easy portion stuff, portions and so on. If you break down the steps and uh, try to play, plug the low-hanging fruit, the easier questions, easier sections. I mean, say both of prelims and mains and interview, you prepare the easier parts, you are assured of at least a decent level of marks. So, I mean, breaking down the whole task into smaller units and picking the easier, uh, ensuring that you get the easier parts, will actually make the whole process seem very less intimidating. Yes, I think very rightly said. We need to be practical about the examination and about our approach towards the examination rather than get emotional about it. Yeah. Right. Yes. yes. Uh, thanks a lot, Avinash. I think it was uh, it was was wonderful talking to you. I can I can feel that you are intellectually very developed and very smart man, and that is the reason that you have cleared the examination in first attempt. The practicality with which. Uh, you have taken up the examination. I think that is what we need to develop in order to make sure that we're not, we don't end up wasting time and wasting our lives in, you know, all these competitive examinations and we can do something good in a short span of time. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Avinash, uh, for coming online. And uh, I'm certain that you're going to have a very nice time in RBI and you're going to grow and, uh, you know, go to the top. Probably we'll see you as deputy governor someday. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure. It was my privilege being here. Thank you so much. Thank you.